This video is brought to you by Sayorite. Visit Sayorite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. A bimini top provides protection from the sun and shelter from the rain and spray. In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to make a tubo bimini top. Our frame has been mounted to a wood platform so we can pattern and build it indoors. In this video, we will show in detail patterning on the frame, sewing, sewing zippered pockets, installing a backstay slit, and much, much more. Before we can get started making the bimini top, we need to have a frame to pattern on. If you need a bimini frame, check out the frame kits at Sayrite in both stainless steel and aluminum. If you have a new frame kit from Sayrite and need to assemble it, be sure to first watch how to install a bimini frame. Then come back to this video to make the bimini top. You can pick a bimini kit at the Sayrite website. Our bimini kits can also be modified to fit your needs. Want to use a different color zipper and thread or a different brand of fabric? Just ask and we'll send you a modified quote including all the changes you want. To make this tubo bimini top, first we need to start with patterning. Our bimini frame has been set up and we're just checking to make sure it's uniform here. If you're happy with it, be sure to shore up the strapping tapes on the sides. We like to have two runs of the filament strapping tape on the sides to make sure that it's nice and secure. In the previous video showing how to assemble the frame, we struck a line on the bows. However, we like to strike a line on top of the strapping tape that we installed on the bows in that video just to be sure that we can see it. Using a compass like this helps to ensure that the line is nice and straight. Now we'll apply our seam stick basting tape on top of that line we just struck down. If you were to put the seam stick directly on the bows and not on the filament strapping tape, you may find it very difficult to remove it, especially if it's out in the sun. We broke the seam stick here in the middle position and started with a new run because we like to lay our pattern material on the frame a half section at a time. The seam stick should run a few inches underneath the line that we struck on the sides of the bow for the skirt. Don't understand what we mean by skirt? Be sure to check the video where we assembled the frame. The link for that can be found at the top right corner here. Find the length of webbing that's included in the Bimini skin kits and find the side release buckles. We will install the side release buckles in the webbing. Be sure not to cut the webbing as we'll be using it later on to make webbing support straps. We're going to tension the bows, so we've run the webbing over the bows at the center location and the side release buckles on the underside. Currently our bow is about 42 and a quarter inches and our strapping tape in the middle is firm. Be sure the webbing is at the center location on the bows. Go back to the side release buckle and place your thumb on top of the webbing on top of the bow. With the other hand grab the webbing underneath and give it a few quick tugs. What we're doing is pre-tensioning the tubing at the center location. Let's show this one more time. The buckle is on the underside, he straps it together, he places his thumb on top of the webbing on top of the bow, then gives the loose end a few tugs. Our original position here is shown in red. After a few tugs, we'll show a position in green. Notice that we're only tensioning the center of the bow. The legs are basically in the same position. We do not want to tension it to the point where the legs actually bend as well. Now under tension here you can see our strapping tape is now loose and if we take a measurement what used to be 42 and a quarter is now 41 and a half. Three, three our two bow bimini frame is now ready for patterning. Using the Durascrim pattern material we will place it on top of the bimini. Then we'll remove the transfer paper on the double sided tape revealing the glue and we'll start to baste the Durascrim pattern material in place. We're removing one half at a time and positioning the Durascrim pattern material on top of the bows roughly. Once you have the Durascrim material basically in the general position, you can use scissors and cut away the excess. Just be sure to leave at least six inches underneath the skirt edges and the forward and aft edges of the bimini top. Keep working the Durascrim pattern material on top of your double sided tape, sticking it down and then removing it in an effort to try to remove as many wrinkles as possible. This may require sticking it down and removing it several times before you're actually happy. 
take care not to stretch the DuraScrim pattern material too tightly. The DuraScrim pattern material does have scrim lines running through the material to help it from being pulled too tightly and actually stretching. But if you pull super tight, it can stretch, and you want to try to avoid that. Here you can see Bill is working out the wrinkles as best as possible all along the length of the bows. At the sides it's a little bit more difficult, but as you can see here you can remove almost all of the wrinkles. If you have any wrinkles in the DuraScrim pattern material they will show up on your fabric piece. Be sure to mark Sout for starboard out, aft side, and Pout for port out on the DuraScrim pattern material so you do not get confused when you remove it. Here at this edge, this is the forward edge, so we'll mark it four. When we assembled the frame, we marked the skirt edges. Be sure to transfer those marks to the pattern here. Now we'll strike a line all along the length of the bows, marking directly on top of the line that we struck on the bows. It's better to use dash marks than it is to try to draw a straight line. Using dash marks makes it simple to basically run a line that's going to be nice and straight when it comes time to pattern the fabric. If you feel you can draw a nice straight line, go ahead. At the center location, be sure to mark it just as we did here. The center location should be in the middle of that webbing that pretensions our bows. Here we are coming to the opposite side and there's our skirt indicator and so we'll transfer that to the pattern and then we'll move here to the aft side. We're on the starboard side here following that same procedure. Our DuraScrim pattern material is now patterned with skirt, line indicators, sout, pout, and center locations all marked on the DuraScrim pattern material. For a two bow bimini we need a length of line that's about 50 inches or so so it can go from forward to aft bow and we'll place a mark a couple inches from the end of the line with a sharpie. The pocket will have a different release point along the crown compared to the skirt edge due to the angle and curve of the bow at those locations. Here's a quick illustration of what we'll be doing next. We will use the differences in these measurements when it comes time to pattern the bows. This probably seems very confusing, but it won't be after we show you exactly how to do it. We'll place that line's mark on top of the line that we struck down when patterning and also at the center location on the bow, as seen here. Now hold it at that location, then we'll wrap the line around the bow to the underside. And now we'll place a mark directly under the bow with our permanent marker. Even though we're doing this here, yours may be different depending on the angle of the bows, so be sure you do this for your frame setup. Here we're showing it in slow motion. Now we'll move to the sides. That was at the center location. Now we're at the skirt mark. We'll place our first mark on that skirt line directly on top of the line that we struck along the length of the bow. Then we'll take our line and wrap it around that bow going horizontally to the second bow. So we're running the line back to the primary bow or the aft bow here. Now that line is horizontal and we'll take our marker and we'll place a mark that is midship on this forward bow. Be sure the first mark is directly on top of the skirt line and the patterning line that's running along the length of the bow, as you can see here in the video. Keep this line. It will be used later on when it comes time to sew our pocket zipper to the bimini top, but not until then. Our difference is 5 8 inch. Yours may be different depending on the angle of the bows. Adding seam allowance to the pattern is next. Now we'll add our seam allowance and we'll also join the lines that indicate where our skirt goes. Here we're using sandbags to help hold the DuraScrim pattern material down nice and flat. A straight edge with a sharpie marker can be used to join the skirt lines on the sides. Along the forward and aft portion of our pattern material we need to add a half inch seam allowance. Here we're using a flexible curved ruler here, which is about a half inch wide, and we're striking a line right next to our dotted line that we marked on the pattern material while it was on the bows. This half inch seam allowance is added to the outside edges of the bimini top, excluding the skirt edges. 
we'll do this at the forward side and the aft side. We will not add any seam allowance along the sides of the bimini where the skirt will be. Then we'll cut it out with scissors right along that line that we just struck on the fore and aft side and along the lines at the skirt that we struck down when joining the skirt lines. Our bimini top includes a backstay slit and that's what we're doing here. Ours is in the center and will extend about 17 inches inside the aft edge. Yours may be totally different. Here we're marking where the backstay slit goes and we're adding a few extra inches. We're going to go to 19 inches just to ensure that we have enough of a slit for the backstay wire to come through the bimini. Here's our 19 inch mark. We expect it to be at 17 inches. We'll now use that pattern and transfer it to the fabric choice we've selected for the bimini top. Now we can lay out our sunbrella, marine grade fabric or other fabric if you've chosen to use other types, and place our Durascrim pattern material on top of it so that we can pattern from it. If you don't have sandbags like this, you can use books to help hold the Durascrim pattern material down in place. Bill's using the soapstone pencil here and marking the edge of the pattern material and here is using the marking chalk. Both work in about the same way, but he prefers the soapstone marking pencil. You can also strike a line just by moving it along the edge of the Durascrim pattern material, but Bill prefers to stencil the edge, as shown here, all along the perimeter. It does take a little bit more time, but it is a little bit more accurate. Now along the skirt edges, where we know where it ends, we can just use a straight edge and strike a line along that. Our pattern is bigger than our table, so we will move some of the sandbags over and pull our fabric to pattern the opposite side since it hangs over the table's edge. It is very important to mark the center location. Here's where our backstay rests, but it's also the center location of our bimini there on the aft edge and here on the forward edge. Then it's very important as well to mark sout for starboard out, aft for aft edge, and pout for port out on the fabric itself. Here's the forward edge, so we'll mark four. Those marks are crucial, so don't forget them. Here's our backstay slit, so we're gonna transfer that mark to about the 19 inch location. You may or may not have a backstay, or you may have two backstays. You need to place them at the appropriate position on your fabric. We'll now be using the Cerite Edge Hot Knife with a metal ruler on the underside and cut out our bimini top. We'll cut right along that edge we struck down or scribed on the fabric, being sure the metal ruler is on the underside to prevent damage to the tabletop below. At the center location, be sure to place a notch there, as you saw here in the video. Make sure that notch does not go deeper than a quarter inch into the fabric. If you do not own a professional hot knife like the Cerite Edge Hot Knife, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. We do recommend that you use a hot knife along the edge of a synthetic fabric to keep it from unraveling. Yeah, here Bill is folding it in half. Do not expect it to be totally uniform. In fact, you can see here ours is slightly off. Do not let that alarm you and do not make modifications. That's completely normal. We'll be using the bimini top to pattern pockets. In order to cut our bow pockets, we need to lay the new bimini top we just patterned on top of some of our scrap fabric. You should have plenty. Position it as close as possible to one of the bottom edges or the top edges of the fabric. Then scribe a line, being sure to mark where the skirt edge falls and the center location, as shown here, along either the aft or the forward edge, because they both need to be done. At the skirt edge, measure up six inches and draw a straight line from that six inch location down to the line that we just struck. We'll do that on the opposite skirt edge as well. Six inches up, strike a line down to the line we just struck on the fabric from our pattern. It is highly important now to transfer sout, starboard out, to that pocket. So we write sout. 
We also write aft because this is the aft pocket in the center location. And we write pout for port out along that pocket edge. Follow that exact same procedure for the forward edge. Position the fabric as close as possible to the edge to utilize as much of the fabric as possible. Lay our sandbags on and trace it as well. We're going to skip forward here since this is done exactly the same way as it was done for the aft edge. Don't forget when done to mark it sout and pout. And now we can move our bimini top material and use the Sayrite Edge hot knife yet again with the metal ruler underneath to prevent damage to the tabletop and we'll cut along that line that we made and the six inch lines on the sides. Along the skirt edges we're going to just cut out to the six inch location that we measured and stop. Because our fabric was cut with a hot knife we get a little bit of a sandpaperish residue. Here we're using the Serite Canvas Patterning Ruler to basically clean it off. Then we'll use that ruler to measure perpendicular from that cut edge. We're measuring up six inches so our soapstone marking pencil is in the six inch hole and the metal guide at the bottom is perpendicular to the edge that we cut. I don't think we mentioned it, but use the hot knife and be sure to mark the center location of each pocket. We showed that but did not mention it. Since it's difficult to go further because we've run out of cut fabric, we're going to use the flexible curve again here and extend that bottom edge following the same angle that it is now. So we'll use a soapstone here and trace a line out over some of our scrap fabric that will not be used. Then we can follow that scribed line and keep our Sayrite Canvas Patterning Ruler perpendicular to that line we struck down, extending the top portion of our pocket. Now it is true we're going to be cutting off two inches of this pocket at the end anyway, but as a general rule we like to go and continue to scribe the line following the same curve all the way to the end. Then later on we'll cut off the two extra inches on each end of the pocket. For now we're going to go all the way to the end. We'll do the same procedure on both ends of our pocket here. This is the forward pocket. We'll repeat the process for the aft pocket. We will not show all of that since the process is done exactly in the same manner. Once that's done, we can cut out this pocket with the Serite Edge hot knife again, thus sealing the edges of the fabric to keep them from unraveling. Now we have both the forward and aft pockets cut out. Now we'll take this ruler, which is two inches wide, and scribe a line, which is two inches from the end of the fabric. We need to cut away that. Be sure this line follows the same straight edge as the end. Now we'll use the Serite edge hot knife yet again and cut off the extra two inches on each of the ends of our two pockets. On the aft edge we're going to create a tuck down tail. A tuck down tail looks great. You can see it here on this aft edge. However, when you push against the fabric at the corner it does not easily push back. So adding an extension is almost nearly impossible if using a tuck down tail. So that's why we're installing it to the aft edge here. To make a tuck down tail, we'll take our bimini top and place it yet again on top of our scrap fabric. Since we're designing it for the aft edge, this is the aft edge of our bimini top. And we will simply trace around that edge just like we did when we created the zipper pocket for the aft edge. Be sure to mark the center location. The ends of our tuck down tail should extend at least an inch beyond the edge of our bimini top. He has not yet done that here. He's simply tracing that edge. But he'll come back to it and extend it a little bit later. And after he traces it, be sure to mark pout for port out, center position, and sout for starboard out. This is the aft tuck down tail. Now he'll go back to the short ends and add about an inch of extra material there. 
He does it here, and he'll go to the other side and do the same. We'll be trimming these ends later on to make it look good with the bimini top. Now we can cut out on that line with the Cerite Edge hot knife. This tuck down tail needs to be three inches in width. So we'll use the Cerite canvas patterning ruler and mark a line that's perpendicular to that edge that's three inches up from that edge. Because we want this tail to be rather stiff, we're going to be making two of these. So we'll use the first one for the pattern for the second. Then cut the tail out with a Cerite Edge hot knife. Because we want this tail to be rather stiff, we need two layers. So we're going to use the first one we cut out as a template for the second one. And it'll be cut exactly the same as this first one. So here Bill is laying it out nice and flat, he traces around it, and then he will cut it out with the Cerite Edge hot knife as well. Don't forget to label it Pout, Sout, and the center location, and Aft, because this is part of the Aft tuck down tail. We could make another set of tuck down tails for the forward portion of our bimini, but we're going to use a hang down tail there, just in case we add an extension. To the tuck down tail, one of them, add double sided tape seam stick for canvas to both long edges. We will be basting these two tails together so they are directly on top of each other and the shape will be exactly the same because they are exact mirror images of each other. Remove the transfer paper revealing the glue and then baste carefully making sure that all edges line up perfectly and all curves. Typically, we like to start basting from the center location out, both directions. After it's basted, we'll use the Sayrak Canvas Patterning Ruler to be assured that it is basted solidly together. We didn't show basting the other side, but you need to do that as well. Now we can set this tail aside. We'll be using it later on. A hang down tail is a lot easier to make. However, it's not as neat looking as a tuck down tail. You can see the wrinkling here in the fabric edge. However, this hang down tail is excellent for extension panels. So if you want to add a panel from the bimini to let's say a dodger, it allows for the access of the fabric to run underneath that edge. Whereas the tuck down tail does not allow for it. So now we'll show how to make a hang down tail. We're going to be making this hang down tail for the forward edge of our bimini, just in case we add an extension panel later on. We folded the bimini top in half so that we can take a measurement from the center location all the way to the ends following that edge. We also need to take into account the curve. So here Bill is using a soft tape measure and measuring the half length, so about 43 inches. Then on the scrap material, we need to multiply that measurement, 43 times 2, which is 86 at least, and add a few inches, so about 88 or 89 inches. Here we need to make a rectangle that is 6 inches wide by the length that we measured, plus a few inches. Our scrap fabric at the ends is not wide enough, so we're going to slit this scrap fabric in half and then sew two portions of it together to accommodate our six inch width that we need. Now we can take these two halves together to the sewing machine and create a semi-flat felled seam. So our first stitch will be a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. Here we're using the Cerite Magnetic Sewing Guide as a fence to keep that stitch a half inch from the edge. And we're also sewing this with the Cerite Fabricator Sewing Machine. Now we'll splay the panels apart and roll up one end so it fits under the throat of the sewing machine and we'll create a top stitch that is approximately an eighth inch from that folded splayed out seam. Be sure to pull the fabric tightly so that it's folded right on that first stitch as you sew this top stitch. We did some reversing at the beginning and we'll sew down its length and do some reversing at the other end. This creates a beautiful seam right in the center of our hang down tail. So if you don't have enough fabric, you can always do this to create a hang down tail or a tuck down tail. Setting the appropriate tension is important for sewing. Actually, when it comes to sewing, 
we'd rather have the knots a little bit on the underside than we would if they were pulled up to the top side because if you have too much tension it actually puckers up the fabric and does not make as nice of a stitch. Now you need to make a rectangle that is six inches wide by the length we measured times two plus a few inches. So for us it's about 86 or 80 eight inches in length and the clear acrylic ruler is six inches wide so it's perfect for making this hang down tail. Then we'll cut it out with a Zerite Edge hot knife. The hang down tail then is folded directly in half and we're going to fold it so that our top stitch is showing on the outside here since we had to join two halves together to make the length. Once it's folded in half and creased well we're using the Zerite canvas patterning ruler to crease the folded edge then we'll apply double-sided tape seam stick for canvas along the inner edge right above that folded score line and the outer edge. We'll then fold this hang down tail in half along its length and the double-sided tape will help it to stick. We will be setting this hang down tail aside as well until a later step. We'll use the Serite Canvas Patterning Ruler to be assured that everything is stuck down nice and secure. Facing strips are cut to reinforce the edges of the bimini and also for possible future curtain panels where zippers need to be attached. For the sides of our bimini we need to make facing strips. We need one strip per side and that strip is three inches wide by the length of the side. We're measuring that side about two inches up from the edge, which is about 33 inches. Using the clear acrylic ruler, which is six inches wide, we can create a rectangle that is at least 33 inches long by six inches wide. Then we can use the clear acrylic ruler and measure down three inches, thus taking our rectangle and slitting it in half. Now we'll have two strips that are equal or slightly longer than the sides that are three inches wide and they're for the sides. And we'll cut that out with the serrated edge hot knife. We will not show that. All of our fabric has been cut and is ready to be assembled and here's what it should look like. On the sides we have the facing strip. At the bottom edge is the aft edge which is a tuck down tail. Then the aft pocket and sleeve. The bimini top the forward pocket and sleeve, and the hang down tail at the top. Next we'll install binding to our sleeve pockets. For the pockets or sleeves we need to install binding, so here we're preparing the one inch swing away binder. For this two bow bimini we have two pockets or sleeves and we need to install binding to the concave side of those pockets and also the two short ends of each. When installing binding, it's always wise to sew a few inches of binding, then insert your application. When we start sewing here, we want to do a little bit of reversing when we come upon the actual surface of the fabric. So here, Bill does a little bit of reversing. Do not reverse more than an inch because the swing away binder will swing back and your reverse stitching will not be on top of your previous stitch if you reverse more than an inch away from the starting point. And be sure you push your fabric in towards the exiting point of the binder. That's the most important position. It's not at the entry point, but where it exits and is immediately sewn. If you keep your fabric pushed into the folded edge of the binder at that location, it'll always be perfectly sewn in place. We are using a one inch bias binding for this pocket and that bias binding which is umbrella for this application is included in the Bimini skin kits. And as we did at the beginning, at the end of this pocket we need to do a little bit of reversing. No more than an inch back. We will trim the binding with scissors, though after this step we will use a hot knife to ensure that the edges do not unravel. To install binding on the ends, we will just reinsert that pocket sewing over the previous binding that we had sewn and do some reversing there as well. Mm -hmm. 
Rather than pull the assembly out here, leave it in and take your next piece, trim it, and then reinsert it in there so that these pieces will be sewn all in a line. Then after they're sewn, you can take them out and trim them with the serrated Edge Hot Knife to keep the ends from unraveling. So now our pockets have binding on the concave portion and on the two ends. Let's move on. If your bimini does not require a backstay slit, skip this chapter. Sayerite has devised a simple way to install a backstay slit, basically by making a zipper plaque that can simply be sewn in. This will allow the backstay to come through the bimini top so we can install the bimini top and allow the wire to sit in the middle of the bimini top and zippers can zip up to the wire, thus closing down any major gaps. In this chapter, we're prepping for the backstay slit. Our slit comes into the aft edge, so we're going to take the aft pocket, which is one whole piece right now, and position it at the center location. Then we'll mark where the backstay slit rests. Our backstay slit's exactly in the center position of this top. Wherever your backstay slit is, you need an opening that is four inches in width. So using the clear acrylic ruler, we'll mark two inches from the center location on this, the starboard side, and two inches on the other side of the center location on the port side. Thus, we have a four inch opening. Once the pocket is marked, it's important to transfer those marks to the bimini top. So here at the bottom edge, he transfers those marks he just made to that top. Then on the pocket, we will cut it on those marks using the serrate edge hot knife. If your bimini top does not require a backstay slit, you would leave this pocket all one length. On the bimini top at the aft edge where we made those marks, which indicate where the pocket starts and stops, we need to make cut marks at those locations so we don't lose them. Again, do not cut deeper than a quarter inch with the serrated edge hot knife. In an effort not to get confused, he labels the other side of the pocket aft as well. Then we'll take it over to the Sayerite uh, fabricator with the one inch binder installed and sew binding on those new cut edges of that aft pocket. If your bimini top does not include a backstay slit or more than one backstay slit, you can actually skip this chapter altogether and go to the forward pocket because the forward pocket does not include any kind of backstay slit and your aft pocket would be done in the same manner as the forward pocket if no backstay were included. So you may want to skip to that chapter instead of watching this one. This is only the beginning steps of creating a backstay slit. We'll come back to it later on. First we need to install zippers. Prior to assembly you may want to make a mock-up of how the panels, pockets, and tails will be assembled together. So here we've cut it out on paper and we'll use a stapler to staple each of these sections together. This way you can use it as a reference for when it comes time to assemble each one of the pockets and sleeves together. You'll notice that we are matching up the sout and pout sides, starboard and port sides, and the tails go between the pocket or sleeve and the bimini top. Now we could always come back to this to determine exactly how things should be basted together. But we also have this video. So if you'd like to use the video to simply figure it out, you can do that. Or you can make a mock-up like this and figure it out to make sure that you're doing it exactly right. Let's move on. Now it's time to attach the zippers to the pockets. Here we have a number 10 Vizlon zipper and Bill is marking the side which will be sewn to the pocket itself. The side he marked is the side that has the zipper's pull tab facing up. Then double-sided tape is applied to that side. Each pocket, whether it includes a backstay slit or not, will include at least two zippers. If your bimini top includes two backstay slits, then you would have three zippers along the pocket. Because your pocket would be cut into three separate sections to allow for the two backstay slits. Ours only includes one. The zipper is now basted to the side that has the writing on it, even though the pocket was turned so the writing is facing down. That's because it's easier to install it 
with the pocket on top of the zipper. We will base the zipper down so that the binding is right up against the zipper's teeth, against the side of the zipper's teeth. And the starter box and post are at the end of the pocket. When we base to the curved portion, you'll notice the pocket will actually stick up with a little bit of a bubble. That's normal because there's shape there. You'll notice throughout this video that we use the Sayrite Canvas Patterning Ruler anytime we use the basting tape to basically secure the basting tape to the Sunbrella acrylic because nothing really likes to stick to the Sunbrella acrylic. If you don't own the Sayrite Canvas Patterning Ruler, you can use another object to do the same. Now we're going to cut the ends of the zipper, but we're going to leave them along by a few inches here just to get rid of the excess. Our zipper slider is on the portion that we cut off. Do not throw that away. We'll need that later on. Now for the other side of our aft pocket with the backstay slit, we'll install the other portion of the zipper on the other half. Same process. Notice the zipper was installed to the side that has the writing, aft, and in this situation, pout. The aft pocket included a backstay slit for us. This forward pocket does not. The process for installing the zipper to this forward pocket is done in exactly the same way as done with the aft pocket, except for it doesn't have a slit in the middle. We do need to locate the middle position and transfer the mark to that top edge. Basting tape should be applied to the side of the zipper's flange with the zipper's puller tab facing up. Bill marks the zipper's flange with a pencil indicating where the basting tape should be applied. Though we did show this whole process with the aft pocket, which did include a backstay slit, we're going to show this process yet again in its entirety here for the forward pocket because it is a little bit different at the center position. The pocket will contain two zippers, one on the port side and one on the starboard side with a little bit of a break in the middle. So for that second zipper, follow the same procedure. Find the side that it should have the basting tape applied to it and apply it. Bill uses his finger here at the middle position and marks a finger away from the center position so it's about one inch from each side leaving a two inch gap approximately at the center location. That's where the zipper will start on both sides. The zipper should be basted to the side of the pocket that has the marking on it. In other words, sout and pout marked on the pocket. Notice the starter box and starter pin is at that mark that we made, which is about an inch away from the center location. The edge of the pocket with the binding sewn on it should be right up against the zipper's teeth, as you can see here in the video. When we get to the curve of the pocket, there'll be a little bit of a bump in the pocket due to the shape of that curve. Cut off the excess zipper at the end, leaving about a two inch tail. Do not throw away the other half of the zipper because it has the slider that we will use later on in the video. Now the pocket is facing with the writing up, so the second zipper is basted at that one inch location away from the center location, just as we did with the first zipper. And now the pockets flip so the writing is facing down. Next up, sewing zippers to pockets. We're going to remove the binder from the fabricator sewing machine just so we have more room underneath the arm of the sewing machine. We won't need it for a while now. We like to sew with the zipper facing up. We'll start here at one of the ends, do some reversing to lock our stitch in place. And we'll sew so that the presser foot is right up against the uh, zipper's teeth. That keeps your stitch nice and straight. The stitch length when sewing zippers and also this bimini top should be at least 6 millimeters in length. Because we're using the Sayrite Fabricator sewing machine, this is almost an 8 millimeter stitch length. The longer the stitch length, the less the uh, seam will look puckered. We're sewing this bimini top with a V92 polyester thread, which is a UV resistant thread. 
A polyester thread will last about five to eight years in a non-tropical environment, but where the sun is very intense in the tropics, it may only last two or three years. For a lifetime guaranteed thread, we recommend using a PTFE thread. Profilin sews best in almost any sewing machine, including an oscillating hook sewing machine. Profilin thread is UV proof and very chemical resistant. So you notice here that we started with the aft pocket, which does include a backstay slit. That's why it was in two separate sections. And now we will follow the same procedure as you've seen here with the forward pocket. And that pocket is all one continuous piece with two zippers in it. When we reach the portion where the two zippers are very close to each other, about two inches away, we will continue sewing through the binding because there are multiple layers of Sunbrella marine grade fabric here. So we don't have to worry about a needle punching through a single layer here. So we'll just sew across that opening to the next zipper. Do some reversing and continue on down the way. Hopefully that covers everything regarding how to sew the zippers on the pockets, both the forward and aft pockets. Good. Notice we have extreme slow speed control using the Sayerite Fabricator sewing machine. It's set up with a Sayerite workhorse servo motor, so you get slow speed control and you also get speed if you want it. A phenomenal sewing machine package. Here's what that stitch looks like on the side that will be visible, and this is the underside that will be up against the bimini top when we're done. We'll start with the aft edge. The bimini top's been laid on our table, and we're going to work on the aft portion of the bimini top. So, our aft portion includes the backstay slit. The first process is to apply basting tape to the tuck down tail, if that's the tail that you're using. You want to apply the basting tape to the convex shape of that tail along the convex side of that tail assembly. Okay. We've broken the seamstick basting tape at the center location because we will actually sew on one half at a time, in other words the port or starboard side first. Then we'll flip the tail assembly over and apply basting tape to the opposite side, again against the convex shape of that tail. And now we will baste the tuck down tail to the aft portion of our bimini top. We will not slit this for the backstay slit. It should be one continuous piece. We'll baste on only a half section at a time. You'll notice the tuck down tail matches the same shape as that curved edge on the bimini top. Be sure the raw convex edge matches the edge of the bimini top. The tail should be long, as you can see here. It's very important to use the Sayerite Canvas Patterning Ruler or something similar to help adhere the basting tape to the bimini top because you're going to have a lot of bulk here. Next, we remove the basting tape from the tail and we'll prepare to stick down our pocket or sleeve. We want this pocket, which has the backstay slit, to start at that point we measured two inches away from our center location because that's where our backstay is located. So at that notch along the edge of the bimini top. And be sure that it is lined up exactly with the raw edge of the tail and the bimini top underneath it. Remember, we cut the end of the pocket off by two inches, so it should be two inches shorter than the skirt edge of the bimini top, which it is here. Bill removes the excess seam stick that is not required there on the tail. And again, use the Sarah Canvas Patterning Ruler to make sure that everything is stuck down as best as possible. Remember, things do not like to stick to Sunbrella marine grade fabric. We will not base the other half of this assembly together yet. It's best to take it to the sewing machine and sew this portion on first, then come back and base the other portion on after this is sewn in place. You remove the basting tape from the other side of the tail too. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine. We'll position the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic sewing guide at a half inch on our needle plate. It's indicated on the fabricator sewing machine. If yours is not, measure over a half inch from the needle. So we're sewing a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric, doing some reversing at the beginning. We're sewing into the tail here and not into the pocket yet because the pocket is two inches away from the skirt edge of the bimini top. Then now we're sewing into the pocket and we'll continue sew to sew all the way to the halfway point. 
and we'll do some reversing at the halfway point here. Keep that edge up against the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic sewing guide for a perfect half inch stitch. Bill does some reversing over top of the end of the pocket here. Uh, that's really not necessary. The first stitch does not require any reversing here over assemblies like this because the top stitch actually secures or strengthens that stitch exceptionally well. When he reaches the center position here at that mark, he'll stop sewing because we still need to base the other half in place. And there you can do some reversing. The reason that we're sewing one half at a time is because there's a lot of basted panels that are uh, adhered together here and the basting tape doesn't hold exceptionally well for big panels. So if you were to baste the entire length of the uh, tail and the pocket all at once and then take it to the sewing machine, it is more than likely that a portion of it will fall apart before you get to uh, sew it together. So here we're doing the other half in exactly the same way as we did with the uh, opposite half. And now we can take this back over to the sewing machine and start at the middle position, keeping our stitch a half inch away from the raw edge of the fabric and sew down its length as well. Coming up next will be the top stitch which will really provide some strength uh, for this stitch assembly. So here we are coming to the end of the bimini top. We do some reversing here to lock the stitch in place. Now we'll remove the magnetic guide here and splay the assembly apart. We're going to be sewing a top stitch into the bimini top, so we need to make sure that half inch tail is folded back towards the bimini top as we sew it because we want to sew through the half inch tail on the underside and here at the corners where there's a lot of shape you'll need to be careful and sew very slowly and splay the material apart in other words pull it from left and right so that uh, our stitch our first stitch is uh, in the middle of that fold and our top stitch is about an eighth inch away from that splayed open portion so go slow here because this stitch is visible from the top side of the bimini and you want it to be as nice and straight as possible. You'll notice all throughout the video when Bill does any adjusting of his fabric assembly that his needle is buried at the thickest part of the shaft. That way it doesn't move on him while he adjusts the fabric. That's a phenomenal idea and a practice that you should get used to doing because that also helps to avoid needle deflection issues. Notice the needle's buried here thickly in the fabric. He can make adjustments while the needle's buried without things moving on him and without bending the needle. We're still in the portion of the bimini that has a lot of shape, so that's why uh, Bill's taking his time here, splaying the fabric apart and moving fairly slowly here. At the straightaway here, he can go a little bit faster, but he's still going slow enough to keep the stitch nice and neat. This is where our backstay slit is, so our pocket is separated here because this is the aft end. So he checks to make sure that the tail, the half inch tail on the underside, is still in the right position, which is facing towards the bimini top. Moving ahead, here we are coming to the end. You can see the uh, tail that extends a little bit past the bimini top and he'll just sew through the bimini top to the end of the bimini top and do some reversing. And that completes this pocket and tail assembly. Here's what it looks like on the outside and here's what it looks like on the inside. You can trim the thread tails uh, with a polyester thread you can actually melt them which is, really looks nice. Be careful not to hit the fabric with the hot knife because it'll ruin it. Uh, with a PTFE thread, you cannot do that because a PTFE thread will not melt easily. Next, the forward tail and sleeve. This same process is done with the forward tail and sleeve or pocket. We're basting the folded edge of this hang down tail here and we will baste it on both sides and break it in the middle so we can apply one half at a time just as we did with the aft pocket. 
We will base this tail to the forward edge, starting at the halfway position of the bimini top. We're only going to assemble half of a side, whether it be the port or starboard, mainly because there's a lot of bulk, including the bimini top, the tail, and the pocket. And we do not want it to come apart when we take it to the sewing machine and sew it. Use the Sayerac canvas patterning ruler or something similar to make sure the basting tape is secured as best as possible to the canvas. Remove any excess basting tape on the tails because that's not necessary there. And now we can baste the uh, pocket. This pocket does not include a backstay because it is for the forward portion of the bimini top. So it is one continuous piece. So we need to make sure that we put it at the center position. There's a center mark on the pocket and a center mark on the bimini top. So it's laid right directly over top of themselves. And we match up the edges perfectly and baste it in position. The tail will be shorter than the actual bimini top by at least two inches. Now that that half of the bimini is assembled, we can take it to the sewing machine and sew that half, sewing a semi-flat filled seam. So yet again, we're going to use the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide to keep our stitch exactly a half inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. We'll start sewing here, reversing at the beginning, and sew all the way through to the center position and stop sewing there. And then we'll take it back and baste it all together, just like we did just then, and then bring it back to the sewing machine and sew the other half. Since this same process was shown uh, for the aft pocket and tail, we're going to show this in double time because the process is exactly the same. All right, let's go back to normal speed here. We're done with the first stitch. Now we need to create a top stitch. A good habit to get into is to check your bobbin before you create a top stitch, because you really don't want to run out of bobbin in the middle of a top stitch. That's what uh, Bill just did there. Now we remove the magnetic guide and he will create the top stitch. We're going to again show this in double time. We're creating the stitch on the bimini top with the half inch flap underneath that. As you create the top stitch, be sure to splay the fabric apart, in other words, pull it left and right, as you can see here in the video. Now our tails and our pockets are sewn to the bimini top. Let's move on. Facing strips are now added to the sides of the bimini. These facing strips are also added for reinforcement, just in case you want to add zippers for enclosure panels later on. The facing strips go on the skirt edge of the bimini, in other words the starboard and port sides of the bimini. We're going to apply double sided tape, seam stick for canvas, along one of the long edges and fold or hem the uh, edge back about a half inch. This creates a two and a half inch facing strip now. We'll do that to both facing strips. Then we will apply double sided tape on top of that half inch hem that we just created and along the other side of the facing strip along its length. Next we can take that facing strip to the bimini top and baste it on the inside of the underside of the bimini top. Our writing on the bimini top is facing the table top. We will peel off the transfer paper and reveal the glue and baste the facing strip on so that the half inch hem is facing towards the middle of the bimini top. The raw edge is facing towards the uh, bottom of the skirt edge. Our facing strips will be too long and that is completely expected. What we'll do next is we will uh, smooth it out with a Sarac canvas patterning ruler then we'll use our soapstone pencil to mark where the uh, semi-flat filled seam 
edge of fabric rests. Then we'll use a serrated edge hot knife and trim it there, being sure that we don't cut through our original fabric. That's why there's a metal ruler underneath it. And then we will tuck that end basically underneath the uh, sewing uh, semi-flat filled seam that secures the tail and the pocket together. Here we're doing it on both sides. Then we'll take it over to the sewing machine after both uh, facing strips are applied to the starboard and port side and we will sew about an eighth inch uh, or so from uh, the folded edge of that facing strip uh, to the opposite edge. Sewing right next to the uh, top stitch that we created earlier. So right there and do some reversing. So we'll do that to both facing strips. Let's move on. To sew the zippers to the bimini top we need to go back to the two bow frame and measure from the center position out to where the curve begins at the side. For this frame it's 31 inches. You can see the curve start right about here. 31 inches. Here along the forward edge, Bill is just marking the center location up a little bit higher. He opens up the pocket and then will measure along the semi-flat felled seam securing the tail and the pocket to the bimini top. He will use that measurement of 31 inches we took off the frame, your measurement may be different, and mark it along the semi-flat felled seam and on the bimini top at that location with the soapstone pencil. Then he'll use a straight edge, we're going to use a Sarah canvas patterning ruler at that 31 inch location, yours may be different, and he will hold the straight edge so it's parallel to the facing strip at the side. Then he'll transfer that mark up a little bit uh, using the straight edge to indicate where it would rest uh, a little bit higher up of the, of the semi-flat filled seam. Now going back to where the zippers begin, where the starter box is, he will splay the pocket down nice and flat there and mark the flange of the zipper in the start point of the zipper with a soapstone pencil. He'll do that to both of the zippers here. This one is the forward edge so it doesn't include the backstay slip, but that same process is done for the uh, aft portion that does include the backstay slit as well. Then he'll measure from the top stitch over to that mark. This is with the pocket open, and notice he's right on that top stitch, which is a stitch closer to Bill. It's six and a quarter inches here. Now he will strike little marks six and a quarter inches from the top stitch. That's that stitch closest to Bill, all along the length of this seam. Place a new mark about every six or so inches apart from each other. Eventually, these marks will be where the zipper flange, or the outer portion of the zipper flange, will be basted to the bimini top. Continue to make marks about every six inches or so, all the way down the length of the seam at the appropriate distance that you determined for the flange of the zipper. Ours is six and a quarter. Make sure to measure up perpendicular to the outer edge or the skirt edge as you make those marks. And our last mark will be right along the hem or the stitch that secures the skirt to the bimini top. Now grab the line we used to determine the exiting point of the sleeve. Place the last mark you made on the line over the soapstone pencil location at the facing's edge and then mark the location of the middle mark on the line. Ours was 5 8 inch. Yours may be different depending on the angle and curve of the frame. Next, we'll use a straight edge. We're using the clear acrylic ruler here. The pocket has been folded back away, and we'll use this to join each one of those marks we made along this seam line. You'll notice that we're moving the ruler to match up each one of these marks because it's not a perfectly straight line. When we reach that line that we struck down, ours is at 31 inches, we will stop. Using a flexible curve or something similar, we will place it over the marks we made from the 31 inch location, yours may be different, to the skirt hem or stitch line that we made. We'll line up the curve to those marks. 
Then, before striking a line, we will carefully move the curve back to the new mark, which is 5 eighths inch back. Yours may be different again, without changing the curve on the flexible ruler. Then, strike a line, as shown. We'll follow this exact same procedure on the other side. This is the port side. We will skip through this rather quickly because the process is exactly the same as what was done on the starboard side. This is the forward edge of our bimini. Now that those lines are drawn on the bimini top and we know where we need to install the zipper flange, we will apply the seam stick or basting tape for canvas along the edge of the zipper's flange. We'll remove the uh, paper, revealing the glue, and then start to baste our zipper starting at the center location on either the starboard or port side. This is the port side. The flange should be directly on top of the line or slightly back from that line we struck down on the fabric. When we get to where the curve begins, we want to transfer our attention to the end of the pocket and we use two fingers here to indicate where we want that pocket to be from the edge of the bimini top. So two fingers distance, about one and a half inches. Then we'll use a straight pin to pin that in place. The reason we do that is there's a little bit of a gentle curve here and because of that our zipper flange may not go down perfectly flat. Having the end being pinned here keeps it from moving on us. It's easier to base the zipper in place with the zipper slightly canted upwards. In other words, the edge, that, edge that's been sewn to the sleeve is actually tilted slightly up, and that helps to remove the wrinkles. What we want to do is try to distribute the wrinkles evenly in this curved area, and then flatten them as best as possible. Be sure to use the Serac Canvas Patterning Ruler or something similar to adhere the basting tape solidly to the bimini top before you do anything else. We'll use a standard pencil here and mark the flange of the zipper uh, about every six to nine inches. And then we'll use a soapstone pencil and mark the bimini top. These are tick marks that will make it possible to match up the zipper right where it should be if it happens to come loose when we take it to the sewing machine and sew. Always a good idea for a zipper that has to be in the right spot. Now because the zipper is zipped to the sleeve, it does add a little bit of excess weight. So if you can, carefully peel back the zipper, unzipping it from the sleeve. That way when we take it to the sewing machine, it has less chance of being ripped off accidentally. So remove the sleeve by holding one side that's been basted and pulling the other side apart. Now we can sew that half of the zipper in place. We'll start at the beginning here towards one of the uh, facing edges and do some reversing to lock our stitch in place. Now if you like, you do not have to sew down into the facing's edge. You can actually start sewing right at that stitch that secures the facing, which sometimes looks better because the stitch actually looks like it comes off of another stitch. And as you sew here, we're keeping our presser foot up against the teeth and being careful that the zipper does not move as we sew it down. We've skipped ahead here and we're at the other end and uh, here we can stop sewing right here if you'd like, right at the facing's edge and do some reversing. We've chosen to sew in about an inch and do some reversing here. We will cut the zipper where we stop sewing and it can be cut right at the uh, facing's edge if you like. We'll do that in a later step. Now we're doing that same procedure for the aft portion of our bimini. So we've already basted the zipper in place just like we did for the forward portion and now we're removing the uh, sleeve from the zippers so we can take it to the sewing machine and sew it without it coming apart. Same process here. It is a good idea not to sew into just the bimini top material by itself. So we want to stop sewing and do not sew a single stitch into the bimini top if we can avoid it. We are sewing through a zipper's flange and the bimini top here, but we're being careful to not do any stitching outside of the flange. So when we reach any breaks in zippers, like you can see here, this is a break for our backstay, though the other side does have a break as well, we do not want to sew through that because it's only 
one layer of material and it has a potential of leaking a little bit more because there's no multiple layers. So here Bill is moving the fabric so he can get to the next zipper without sewing into it and do some reversing here and sew on this other portion of the zipper as well. Our zippers are a little bit too long. We will cut them down in a later step here. Do some reversing here and now that zipper on the aft portion, both zippers are secured down. Burning the tailing uh, threads with a hot knife is not a bad idea. It creates a nice mushroom and then you can press it with your thumb and uh, it helps to uh, finish off the uh, end of the twine, but be careful not to burn your fabric. It works great with polyester thread like this, but with a PTFE thread like Proflin, which is basically UV proof, it will not melt like this. You'll need to find the sliders that were removed from the zippers that were used for the sleeves and uh, take them off of the portion you'll be throwing away and install the slider on the side that has the starter box. Zip the zippers up and stop the slider at the approximate location where you want to cut the zippers off. We're going to cut them off so that they are flush with the sleeve edge. If you decided to stop sewing at the uh, facing's edge, you can still cut the zipper here and leave that portion unsewn. There's no problem leaving a portion of your zipper unsewn. So um, if, you've done, if you would have done that, there would be about an inch of zipper that it would not be sewn to the bimini top, and that's quite okay. Now we're going to install the stainless steel zipper stops. Those are included in the bimini skin kits. We'll take some pliers here and crimp them on the end of the zipper, one of the uh, end teeth. You can either do it on the last tooth or the second to the last tooth and crimp it in place. Do that on both sides of the zipper. We'll do that to all of our zippers for our sleeves. We have four zippers on this one. In the next chapter, we'll be covering the backstay slit. If you don't have a backstay coming through your bimini top, you can skip this chapter. Now we're going to make the zipper plaque and reinforce the underside of our bimini top with a vinyl strip. That's next. In preparation for the backstay slit, we've installed the bimini top onto our frame and we are measuring the tail where we want the backstay slit to be and if we measure up one inch that's where we're going to start our zipper one inch from the end of the uh, tail and then we'll measure with a soft tape measure up to where we want the uh, backstay zipper to start or stop now our backstay will fall someplace between this measurement for us i believe it was 19 inches and uh, now we've got a measurement of looks like 20 inches yep 20 inches so we've added an inch on there for the tail. We'll be installing a vinyl strip that's three inches wide on the underside. And first we need to find the center of that strip. We're using a scryball pencil here because a soapstone pencil will not mark on this vinyl. Then we strike a line down the center of that vinyl strip. This vinyl fabric is three inches wide and equals that measurement we just took of the backstay slit plus two inches. So for us, it's 22 inches in length. We've marked the line on this strip of Shelterite vinyl on the doll side. On the shiny side of our vinyl, because that side we went up against the bimini, we're going to apply the double-sided tape for seam stick down both long edges. Now we need to remove the bimini from the frame. Bill's underneath unzipping the zippers. He will re-strike the line again that he struck on the material, mainly because the soapstone markings have kind of faded a little bit, and he'll mark into the tail as well. This is the location we want the backstay slit, and that line that extends past our 3 inch vinyl wide strip will help us to indicate where the center of it goes. So we'll carefully baste it so that the bottom edge is flush with the edge or end of the tail and it's directly on top of that line that the bill just struck down with a soapstone pencil. Notice the edge, it's flush with the tail's edge and in the center location. Now we'll remark the 19 inch location we started with. Ours is about an inch down from the top 
and we place a mark there. We'll use the Serac Canvas Patterning Ruler to make sure that it's basted well in place and scroll up one side so we can take it to the sewing machine and sew. We do not want to sew the outer perimeter. All we want to do is reinforce where the slit will be. So we're sewing very close to that line we struck on the vinyl material. In fact, if we were to measure it, it'd be about a sixteenth of an inch away from the line or an eighth inch at max. We'll do some reversing at the beginning here on the tail and sew down its length right next to that line we struck at the center location on this three inch wide strip. When we reach the top where we uh, indicated we want the uh, zipper to end at 19 inches for us, we will do some reversing there and sew no longer. So watch. We typically like to reverse here and then move to the other side and follow that same procedure. Now we will sew across that little T, but we'll do that after we have both long sides sewn in. So here we are on the opposite side, sewing the same distance from that struck down line. Same procedure, all the way to the T and then do reversing there. Now we will remove, or rotate I should say, the bimini top so that we can sew the T-junction. So here Bill feeds the assembly underneath the foot of the sewing machine, moving all the way to the T-junction of that final strip. And he will sew across it with several reversing stitches. What this does is reinforce our slit in both the vinyl and the Sunbrella marine grade fabric for the slit that will accommodate the zipper. Because Sunbrella unravels slightly, this vinyl strip will protect it from unraveling and protect that edge. We will still use a hot knife, but uh, first we'll use scissors to cut it. So here he does several rows of a reverse, just trying to close off that rectangle. Now using the same material that the bimini top is made from, we will make a strip that's six inches wide and it will equal the length of the measurement we took on the frame of the top plus three and a half inches. So ours is 23 and a half inches. On one end of the strip, measure and mark two and a half inches and strike a line at that location. Then on the other end, measure down from that end one inch and strike a line. This strip of fabric will make our zipper plaque. Now we'll cut out this six inch wide strip of fabric with a serrate edge hot knife. We will not cut on the two and a half inch line and the one inch line. Then we'll fold it directly in half with those lines facing the outside of the folded section. At our sewing machine, we will place the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide on the three quarter mark of the needle plate. If you do not have a needle plate with markings like this, measure over three quarter inch from the needle and place a guide or a strip of tape if you do not have a magnetic guide like this. Then sew down the length of that zipper plaque, doing no reversing. All the way down the length, this stitch is three quarter inch away from the folded section. Then we'll take scissors or a seam ripper and we will cut that fold, or cut on that fold I should say, all the way down the length of this strip of fabric. Then we will splay that portion open. This splayed open portion will be where our zipper will rest. Taking it over the edge of a sharp table and doing what Bill just did helps to keep the crease nice and sharp, all the creases I should say. Using a number 10 Vislon finished zipper, we will apply double-sided tape to both sides of the zipper's flange. We'll cut this finished zipper to size, being sure not to cut off the starter box or starter pin. We need to cut it to 20 inches in length, as we measured when the top was on the frame. Then we'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and start the starter box at the one-inch mark on our strip. 
and place it right on top of the splayed open portion of the zipper plaque, being sure that it's centered well. If you've done the zipper plaque right, the cut edges of the Sunbrella fabric should fall evenly on the uh, flange edges as seen here. Then we'll use a Sayorite canvas patterning ruler to baste everything down nice and secure. At the two and a half inch mark, we will use our pencil here and uh, scribe a line across the zipper there. That's where it will be sewn shut at a later step. We will sew here starting at the starter box, but we're going to sew the Sunbrella fabric before we reach the zipper. And we want to sew in basically the same location where the presser feet will eventually come up and ride next to the zipper's teeth. So here we do some reversing and then we sew into the zipper and we keep that presser foot right up against the teeth of the zipper as we sew along its length. Notice that the zipper slider is removed. It's easier to sew the zipper in place with it gone. When we get to the other end, we will sew past the end of the zipper into our Sunbrella fabric, following the same um, distance as we were from the teeth, and do some reversing at the end. There we are, that side sewing. Now we will sew the other side on the same side of the presser foot. So in other words, we're sewing from the other end of the zipper, the end without the starter box and starter post. Following that same procedure yet again. Now that the zipper is installed, we can rip the stitches out in the center, holding those two halves together. However, we want to start at the bottom here, where the starter box and post are, and zip up to the point where we want the zipper to stop, and basically go no further. So we stopped ripping our stitches uh, at the 20-inch uh, location. You can remove some of these threads just by pulling them out now that we've used the seam ripper to rip the stitches. Then we will apply double-sided tape to the underside, the side with the zipper sewn onto it, to both long edges, peel off the transfer paper, and create a hem on both long edges. If you've done it right, the hem on both edges should equal a strip that is three inches wide. And we've made it so that it should just fold right to the zipper's flange, the edge of the zipper's flange. If you've done it correctly and you measure it now, it should be three inches wide after both hems are created. A single hem on both long edges and the hem edge should line up with the zipper flange. Now we need to rip the zipper's teeth apart. You can just do that by inserting your thumb and running it down the length of the zipper and separate the two halves. This backstay slit will accommodate two zipper sliders. They are single pole sliders. And the pole is installed, the first one is installed on the side with the starter box. The puller is on the same side as the zipper was sewn on. And we will zip that up part way. These are locking sliders. The second slider was purchased separately from the finished zipper. It's a locking slider, single pull as well, for a number 10 Vislon zipper. We'll start it so that its fat end meets the opposite puller's fat end. There we go. On the two and a half inch measured edge, we will apply two rows of seam stick, just so that it sticks well. One and two. We'll peel off the transfer paper and fold this back to the line that we struck on the zipper. Now we'll take this over to the sewing machine and we'll sew across the zipper's teeth only from stitch line on the zipper to stitch line on the opposite side of the zipper, reversing several times to secure the end of that zipper well. We're sewing through the Sunbrella fabric, the zipper, and the Sunbrella fabric on the underside. So we will reverse here three to four times across this section from stitch on the side of the zipper to stitch on the other side of the zipper. Not across the entire length. 
because it really looks better like this. So this basically closes off the rectangle on the uh, top side, which is the underside right now. Now we'll apply double-sided tape on top of our single hem along the long sides of this zipper plaque. Be sure to apply pressure to the uh, double-sided tape so that it's basted well yet again. Now we can take this assembly and lay it on top of our backstay location on the top side of the bimini. So we'll remove the transfer paper revealing the glue and the one inch location where the starter box is should be flush with the bottom edge of the tail. And the top, which where Bill's thumb is, should be located right over top of the vinyl underneath. Here, Bill is using a soapstone pencil and feeling for where the vinyl edges are, and he marks it with that soapstone pencil so that he is assured that that uh, zipper plaque will rest directly on top of the vinyl underneath. So our vinyl is a little bit long, and that's okay. We'd rather have it long than short. Then he'll use the Serac Canvas Patterning Ruler to make sure everything is basted very well and securely in place before he takes it to the sewing machine and sews. Now we can sew the outer perimeter of our zipper plaque, which will not only secure our zipper plaque, but will also secure the outer edge of the vinyl underneath. That's why the uh, zipper plaque needs to be three inches because our strip underneath is three inches. So he will sew about an eighth inch from the folded edge of this zipper plaque doing some reversing here at the bottom edge of the tail and sewing all the way up to the corner going nice and slow because these stitches will obviously be seen from the outside of the bimini top. You'll have to scroll up the fabric to get it underneath the arm of the sewing machine. That is expected. And because the zipper plaque is fairly wide we don't have to worry about the sliders underneath here. The presser feet of most standard sewing machines will walk right past those without any issues. When we get to the top corner here, he will bury his needle in the thicker part of the shaft and he will rotate the fabric, lifting the presser foot as he uh, rotates the fabric so that he can sew across the top portion of the zipper plaque. There is really no reason to do any reversing here. This will be a nice, clean corner. There's no zipper to sew over, so it's pretty easy because the zipper stops about an inch away from uh, this uh, stop top stitch line. Now he buries his needle and rotates the fabric yet again, not forgetting to lift the presser foot as he rotates. He's lifted the presser foot with the knee lever. This is the Sayerite Fabricator sewing machine, which has a knee lever. Then he lowers the presser foot and sews down the opposite side, just to like he did on the other side. And he'll do some reversing at the tail. Beautiful. Now, if we've done it right, we should have that stitch all around the perimeter or a vinyl strip on the underside as well. We've chosen to use black shelter right here, but you can use a different color if you like. Now we'll take our scissors, being careful not to cut the zipper, and cut directly on top of that line we struck on the uh, vinyl material and stop before we run into our stitches at the top. Now we can take our hot knife and uh, run it up against the sunbrella fabric and you'll also be touching the vinyl fabric as well. But this will help to keep the uh, sunbrella fabric from unraveling uh, as it is used. And the vinyl will also protect it as well. The ends of our tails can now be trimmed to size. Now let's go to the ends of our tails here. And we're using a straight edge and marking um, along the same plane as our sides of our bimini. And we'll just use a can or a cup or something to create a nice smooth uh, gentle curve at the corner. 
This gentle curve at the corner will make it easy to sew on our binding all in one pass. If it were a 90 degree uh, turn, you would likely have to cut the binding at the corner. Because of this gentle curve, we will not have to do that. And using the Serite Edge Hot Knife or something similar will help to seal the edge of the fabric so that if your stitch of the binding comes close to the edge, it will likely not rip out. Now all we need to do is sew binding around the perimeter of our bimini top. We've reinstalled the one inch swing away binder and will now sew around the perimeter of the bimini keeping our fabric pushed well in the throat of the binder attachment. Being careful to feed in the fabric at the exiting point more than at the entry point of the binder. That'll keep the fabric pushed nicely into the fold of the binding as it is being sewn. We're starting at our backstay slit. If you do not have a backstay slit, you can just start at the forward or aft edge and uh, sew around until you meet that uh, binding again, sewing around the entire perimeter. Here at the corners, what we want to do is we want to slowly approach the corners, keeping our fabric pushed into the binder at the exiting point. So watch how Bill does it here. Notice he's paying attention to the exiting point, making sure the fabric is pushed well into the fold of the binding at that location. And that creates a gorgeous corner with binding sewn around the perimeter. Here he's pushing the facing underneath that uh, semi-flat filled seams edge. If the zippers on your sleeve are still zipped up, unzip them. You'll find it much easier to install the binding without all that bulk there. Let's show one more corner. Skipping ahead here, we're coming to the uh, backstay slit. This is where we'll end the binding. He notices something caught underneath, so he takes his scissors and pushes it from the underside. That will help to feed this assembly into this nicely. And there is a lot of bulk here, so go slow and be sure that it is pushed well into the fold. And do some reversing here. We've discussed this before, but with a binder, you don't necessarily want to reverse more than an inch because if you do, the binder will actually start to cant your fabric to the point where the uh, reverse stitching will not be on top of your previous stitching. So just do reversing up to an inch only and stop, as shown here. Now we can cut that binding and we can use the Serite Edge Hot Knife to seal the ends of the binding. You can see we still need to seal some of the uh, Sumbrella fabric that's underneath that vinyl, so Bill's going to touch that up here. Nice. Now we'll go back to the frame and remove the strapping tape in preparation for strap eyes. Sayerite Bimini kits come with strap eyes to attach adjustable webbing straps. If you plan on using rigid support struts, which are sold separately, these would not need to be installed. Okay, we've test fit our Bimini. And what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and we want to try to go back to uh, our general location. We had the strapping tape uh, and that's generally where our straps are going to be. But the reason we want to test fit our Bimini to is we want to make sure that where we put the uh, put the straps is well enough below the, uh, the Bimini itself. It's always best to have a strap eye as close to the skirt edge as possible. So an inch or two below the skirt edge is our preferable location for a strap eye. The strap eyes being close to the skirt edge will put the maximum amount of tension on the bimini top when the webbing straps are tensioned. With the frame folded up like this, all we need to do is put a mark next to the opposite mark so that the strap eyes are at the same location on the frame. Now the top can be removed. Okay, so we're going to take and we're going to do the first one with our drill steady tool. I'm going to set it just directly above my mark rather than right on top of it. 
and I want to be facing as straight out as possible. There we go. So we'll drill our pilot hole. The drill steady tubing tool takes an eighth inch drill bit. We need to enlarge that hole for the stainless steel rivet that we'll be using. For the strap eyes, we like to use rivet stainless steel for marine fittings. Here, we're using a size number 20 drill bit. A 5 32nds inch drill bit may work, but you may have to ream out the hole a little bit if you use that. Stainless steel rivets and the strap eyes are included in the Bimini frame kit, but not in the Bimini skin kit. Now I'm marking actually two things here. I'm marking the hole and then I'm also marking below it so I make sure I don't have it twisted. The drill steady tubing tool is used for the second hole. Brian looks yep. through the hole to make sure it's lined up with the mark he made on the tubing. The eighth inch is used for the drill steady tubing tool. Then our size number 20 to expand the hole for the insertion of the rivet stainless steel for marine fittings. Since these rivets are stainless steel, it does take quite a bit of force to set them, but it is possible with a good riveting tool. We'll follow that same procedure for the primary and secondary bow. We will not show all of this since it is done exactly in the same manner. On occasions when installing a rivet, sometimes the mandrel will slip down into the rivet, making it impossible for the tool to grip the mandrel. In those situations, we like to use a razor blade and pull the mandrel up and then hold the razor blade in place until the grippers of the riveting tool grab the mandrel. Then you can install it. Once it's crimped fairly well the first time, that mandrel should stay up and make it possible for the riveting tool to install it appropriately. As mentioned earlier, we built this on a wooden platform because it's easier to pattern and build the bimini in a house or in a building. We'll be installing the bimini top onto that frame that's mounted on the wooden platform. You would be installing it probably on your boat instead of this. We've made webbing straps in a separate video. If you'd like to see how we make these webbing straps, click the link at the top right. We're going to now use these webbing straps instead of the strapping tape that we had on earlier the components and the acrylic umbrella webbing to make these webbing straps is included in the bimini kits now bill will zip the bimini top that we've completed onto the bows the backstay would be slid into this opening or slit and then the zipper would be zipped shut the webbing support straps can be released by pulling up on this tab that releases the strap easily. And to tension the strap, simply give it a few tugs here. There we go. Since we're not on the boat, we're using a yardstick to indicate where the backstay would come through the bimini top and then the zippers would come closed upon that backstay. The design of this hides the zipper from the elements and it also keeps that edge where the sliders are raised up so that water will not run down into our slit. Our bimini top is now complete. It's now time to go over the materials list and the tools that we used to make this bimini top. The bimini was made from a bimini frame kit from Sayorite and a bimini skin kit from Sayorite. You can find them at the Sayorite website. If you already have an existing frame that's in good condition, you may want to simply order a skin kit. If it's a brand new bimini, order both the frame kit and the skin kit. Need another type of hardware other than what's listed with the kit? Or a different color zipper or thread type? Just ask and we'll be glad to make modifications to the kits and email you a detailed quote with those changes. These materials that are needed for the backstay slit, if you have one, are not included in the kits. If you have questions regarding the Bimini kits, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. Here are some of the related videos that have to do with building a Bimini. They may be helpful in your next DIY project. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos available. 
For more free videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Sayright YouTube channel or check them out at sayright.com. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayright, thanks for watching.